Today we're going to talk about rendering lard. Um, you want to use only pork fat that's fresh, up to five to seven days. Um, you want to process it into lard after you've chilled it. The higher um, quality the lard, the lower the smoke point. Um, so to begin, you want to remove all the skin um, from the fat to be rendered. Because the skin can cause the lard to be softer and an off color. Uh, remove the flesh as well because it cooks faster than the fat and can lend an, an off color. Um, to, pro you, to process your fat, you want to go ahead and cube it in one inch pieces or smaller. You can grind it and that makes the render faster. When you're cooking, you want to use stainless steel, you can use aluminum, or you can use cast iron, but make sure that it doesn't, whatever it is doesn't have rust because that will um, cause uh, oxidative salts to form and that will lower the lard stability. You want to stir it several times during the rendering process um, just to make sure you're getting everything done. The lard's done when the cracklings are golden brown. Um, I've seen some people go ahead and pour some uh, fat off during the process and it's, it's higher quality earlier on so you don't want to overcook it. Um, it. The longer you cook it, like if you cook the cracklings to really, really crispy, then it's really, really porky and that's not as, as good as the other. So once you have it done, we, you want to cook it in an oven or on the stove top. Um, if you cook over 240, 250 degrees, then it's going to cook too hot. So you really want to, I cook a line about 235 in an oven, um, just to make sure you don't overheat. And then um, when it's done, um, you're going to have golden brown, and um, if you don't stir it as it cools, it can become grainy. So you do want to give it a couple stirs, but don't whip it. Um, so when you're putting your, it in your containers, you want to make sure you fill them completely. And um, that way, that the it's kind of like with ice cream, you have less uh, availability of air space in the container. Uh, then it won't go as, as bad as fast. It kind of makes its own seal, as it were. Uh, if you're wrapping it, wrap it tightly, uh, just like you would uh, any other meat product. So you want to uh, store it in a cool, dark place away from strong odors because it will uh, pick those up. You want to make sure it's covered. Uh, if in the refrigerator, if you want to put it in the refrigerator, it keeps longer. Um, it can keep for a year or more. Um, you don't want to keep it past the, the 60 degree Fahrenheit mark, though, because otherwise it can um, it can go bad, and, and you don't want that. So. Uh, for reasons for poor keeping lard are is fat that's been partly rancid before you rendered it, uh, fat from pigs that weren't finished all the way, uh, if you didn't render it long enough, uh, if you overheated it or you had sediment in there, if you expose it to heat or light, if you if you beat it and, or whip it instead of uh, stirring it gently, or if there's odors in your storage room, or if it's above 60 degrees. So this has been all cubed. This is the internal fat. You want to keep that separate from the other fat. It's higher quality. It's about twice as hard when it's made into lard. Um, and this is your back fat, which is your second best fat. And then once it's done, you want to go ahead and strain it. And I just have a colander here, and when straining it through uh, the uh, paper towel and, and a metal colander, not a plastic one, into a container below. And that's all it takes. That is rendering hard.